guys. So um, I am here by myself today because I lost my little assistant. Uh, we've had some pretty bad weather and she's been stuck in the house. So couldn't say no to letting her go play with a friend. Um, so anyways, today I am going to be making a pinch pot. Um, here is my finished one that has dried and will be ready to paint. So I'm going to do a demonstration one and then We'll work on this, we'll get this one completed. Um, so we've got all kinds of stuff here um, and we're going to include links for where you can buy everything. Um, we, Elise and I recently took a class with our friend Garrett Pendergrass and he's a great teacher for kids and adults. Um, we took a little pottery class. So I learned how to do some techniques for this really quick and easy pinch pot and fortunately since we don't have a kiln it does not have to be fired it just dries and it is it's pretty solid um, okay so let's get started I'm gonna move the camera so you won't be able to see me anymore bye okay so what I've got here is I've got my paint which we're going to use in a minute. So I'll move that out of the way while I'm working on the pinch pot. I've got a cup of water. I've got some paint brushes. I've got my air dry clay. And I picked this up actually at Target, but you can order it at Amazon, but Target always has this stuff. Um, I've got this little cactus that I hot glued together. It's a little special, but it'll do the job that we need. I've got some rice that we actually dyed with food coloring. And then I've got some little, uh, what do we call, what are these? Pom-poms. <laughs> um, so we'll put all of that stuff together after we're done with our pinch pot. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can start making my pinch pot. Now I'm doing this on my art desk. I own this, so I don't care about making a mess on it, but this stuff does get kind of messy, so you might want to get like a pan or some sort of tray or even a paper plate um, to work on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is it just, it comes in this tub and we've already used a bunch of it, but I'm going to break off about this much, depending on how big you want your pinch pot to be. You can make them pretty big. Um, but we're going to start small because I'm not the greatest with pottery. I'm still learning, but thanks to my friend Garrett, I have a little bit of skill. Um, okay, so I'm going to kind of roll it around and make a nice smooth ball. Um, you can use your water, so I just like to dip my fingers in here and just put a little bit on. That kind of helps soften it and smooth it a little bit. Not too much because this stuff's already pretty soft. If you have some and you leave it sitting around um, and you've had it for a while and you find that it's hardened a little bit, just add water to it. Just mix some water into it and it'll soften it up. Okay, so let's get our ball here. Okay, like I said, I'm not the greatest at this craft, but it is easy enough that Elise and I made one all on our own. Okay, so now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take my thumbs and I'm gonna stick them down in there. We wanna get almost all the way to the bottom but not so far down that we punch it all the way through. So, let's see. I've kind of flattened my bottom and I'm kind of feeling and I can tell that's probably pretty good there. If you go too far, then just squish it all back together, roll it all back up and start over. Definitely don't want a hole in the bottom for what we're doing. Okay, so I'm gonna start pulling out and up. So out and up. I'm gonna get a little bit of water because it's starting to break a little bit. And just smooth that out. Out and up. And I made a little cat with mine. So what I did is instead of trying to make separate pieces to stick the ears on, 
I didn't want to do that because this air dry clay tends to break kind of easy when you're trying to do a bunch of different pieces. So I just worked my fingers and kind of pulled up for some ears. I just kind of shaped them from this clay. You could do bunny ears, make little eyes for frogs, or just do a simple little bowl. So that's kind of how I did my ears. And then I just kind of kept working until I had the shape that I wanted. Um, I got it a little bit thin here. I don't know if you can see that. You might want to do it a little, try to keep it a little bit thicker, but I think that's okay. And it doesn't take much. I, like I said, this takes about five minutes, three minutes, two minutes. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get some more water here and just kind of smooth this out. I've got a nice little bowl going. I want my, my lip here to be pretty smooth. You can use pottery tools if you wanted to make this like flat, like a real bowl, or use your fingers. You can do all kinds of stuff. We could use different tools to make designs in it, to make texture. I could even, if I wanted to, use one of these little balls here to kind of smush some texture. Maybe, didn't work too well. Anyways, I could even, I wanted to be real crafty, smush some, some rice in there and that'll harden. I'm gonna leave it there. It doesn't make any sense, that's okay. Okay. This is more for demonstration than anything else. So, okay, I am pretty much done with the shape. And like I said, you can be as perfect or as imperfect as you want to be. It's all about how much time and energy you want to put into it. While the clay is soft, you can always start over and rework it until it's to your satisfaction. I'm not going to be real picky about it right now. Um, I could even sit here and spend a little more time smoothing all of this stuff out. But for the sake of time and you guys not getting bored, I'm going to leave it at that. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to give my cat a little face. Um, so I'm going to take my paintbrush end here and just put in some little eyes. And like I said, you can do this as detailed or as simple as you want to. And I'm doing the nose the wrong way. Whoop, cat nose goes as a downward triangle. Upside down triangle for a cat nose. And then it's little mouth. Starting to look like a cat. And then some whiskers. There's better tools to use for this. Like I could have used a toothpick, probably would have been better. Okay, I recommend a toothpick <laughs> for drawing something a little bit um, more pointed. I could also, if I wanted to be, have fun with it, put some little pieces of rice in here, since I've got them. Maybe you want to use the same color because that makes more sense. But anyways. You get the idea. I think I'm going to finish the whiskers just because uh, I like this. I like the rice whiskers. You're all about experimenting and coming up with fun ways to do things. 
use what you've got, right? I'll tell you about how to, actually, I made a little video about making, doing the rice, so I'll track that down. During our snowmageddon here, we made a little video on making rice, and the rice is great if you've got toddlers for a sensory activity. You just bury stuff down in the rice, and they can dig it out. My son loves it. And rice, it does make a mess. However, it's very easy to just vacuum it right up. Oh look, rice whiskers. Okay. Love it. And I like how I made the flat bottom on this one. You can either make a rounded bottom or a flat bottom. So many options. It's all up to you. Okay. So this one will have to dry. It takes about two days for it to fully dry. So I'm going to set this aside. <sighs> so cute. I think I'm going to take this rice off. It's kind of ruining my design here. Oh, how fun. It like left color in there some of the food coloring on the rice. Sorry about the airplane noise. Hold please. Look, it left color on there. Okay, well now you know. There's another fun way to add some color and some texture. Just stick rice dyed with food coloring on there and then pull it off. Okay, so I'm gonna set this little guy aside. I'm gonna have 2,000 cat-faced pinch pots. Just kidding. Okay, now let's paint this guy. So he's already got his little cat face and I don't know why it's a he. It just is. It's a he today. So I'm going to, I'm going to paint this cat. Guess what color I'm going to paint this? <laughs> Bus color blue. So I'm going to, I've got my paint here. I've got some turquoise. Well, I'm going to get it as close to that color blue. So I feel like my house needs a little bit more of this blue color. I'm going to get some water on my brush here. Let's do this turquoise color. I'm just mixing this together. I just want a light turquoise. Maybe add a little green. Get some more of a minty blue color there. White. So once I've got a color I like, I'm probably going to have to mix more. Water. And I'm going to start painting. So just paint. Paint. Actually, I'm going to use my bigger paintbrush for this. I'm just using acrylic paint. You could use ceramic paint or craft paint, um, but acrylic paint works fine too since we're not having to put it in a kiln or bake it or anything. One thing I don't have with me is Mod Podge, so that would also be good to kind of seal your paint. Um, is to go over it with a layer of Mod Podge, which I didn't really think about, but I'll probably do that later. Okay, I'm gonna get my big paintbrush and mix a lot of paint so I can speed up this process. The bigger the brush, the faster the paint. Thank you. 
Okay, there. Now we're going. Now we're cooking here. I hope Garrett is proud of me and my pinch pot skills. I probably need a few more classes to get my technique down. So if you are local to Fort Worth and you don't know who Garrett Pendergrass is, you are missing out. He has a beautiful studio. You can take classes. Um, and he does classes for kids as well. Um, and also he has, you can he gives studio time, so you can pay for studio time to just go in and make your pottery. He'll give you tips, use his tools, and he'll fire your creations for you. Okay, I need to do the inside. came off down here. Now, typically we would probably want to let this dry before we do anything else to it, but you know what I always forget? My napkin.
um, judge my paint skills on this. It's a little different than painting on a canvas or on paper, okay guys? I do recommend letting this guy, let your first layer of paint dry first because I'm pulling paint off as I'm touching it. Cute. Okay, now we've got to do the eyes and the whisker. Actually, let me, I'm gonna paint the little nose pink as well. eyes, whiskers, and mouth. And I'm just going to use black. There is my cat face. And I'll jazz up the other one with some paint because I kind of, I don't know, I might like the other one better. Um, so once I finish that one, I'll post a pics of it. Okay, I'm gonna try to paint over where some of this paint came off really quick. A little touch up. So, Definitely a good idea. Let your paint dry, and then once it's dry, go over it with some um, Mod Podge, which I will do. After I get this whole thing finished. I feel like I maybe had some in here at one time, but I'm not sure. I'm in my backyard art studio. I had to schedule time with the husband <laughs> so he would stay inside with the children while I did this, the smaller ones. We've got the two-year-old and the two-month-old, so they can be a bit of a handful. Okay, so now that is done. Set it here. Everybody see? It's a little kitty cat. Yeah. Okay. Now I I have this guy, and what I want to do, I'm gonna paint this first. I made this little cactus, this tiny little cactus out of some scrap cardboard that I poured. Um. So what I did is I cut the cactus shape out silly little thing. I cut the cactus shape out and once I had my two cactus shapes I cut up about halfway through the bottom of one and then halfway through the top of the other down the middle and then you just slide them together so it looks like a little three-dimensional cactus. So I'm gonna paint my cactus green for obvious reasons. Cactus is usually green. All right and a little bit of green and white together. I always like to mix my paints with white. I feel like it just makes better color and it paints more evenly and opaque. Okay, so now I'm just gonna paint this little guy. Okay. 
Uh, I also, once I slid them together, because it was kind of, they weren't really like sticking together very well, um, I just hot glued through the slits where they slid together. We love all the cardboard creations all over Instagram. There's so many cool things. And also, if I leave boxes laying around long enough, the kids will find great uses for them. Whether it's sliding down the hallway or inventing things. See that my cactus is going to blend quite a bit with my my little pinch pot color choice there. I debated doing that color for the pinch pot for that reason, but that's okay. make the mistakes so you don't have to. Okay. Now our cactus needs some little spikes. all over we want a prickly cactus
just when you think you've finished all the sides. Okay, my cactus is prickly. to do here is I want my cactus to stay in this bowl. So I'm going to, I've got my hot glue gun. It's been heating up. I'm going to put some hot glue down in here. That goes a long way, guys. It's probably a little more than I needed. And I'm going to stick this in here. Okay. Move my pom poms, my rice here. And just move forward. Here, this is going to serve as my dirt, but it adds a fun little pop of color. And there we go. There is my pinch pot succulent. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing to our newsletter, and oh, I forgot one more thing. I wanted to add a little, another little pop of color. I'm going to put this on the top. So before we go, some more hot glue, whoops, that's right, like that. Now we're done. Perfect. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Have a good day, and we'll see you next month with another craft creation.